it gives me immense pleasure to introduce the uh, speaker of today's session, Architect Chalan from Beijing, China. She completed her Bachelor's of Architecture from BMS College of Engineering and uh, is a recent graduate of the Architectural Association's Design Research Laboratory at London. At present, uh, she's an architect at Mad Architects uh, Beijing, China, which is well known for its uh, parametric design uh, styles. Her exemplary knowledge of digital tools makes her computational strategies of communicating concepts in architectural design and research quite fascinating. Her exploration in parametric design continues to be looked at in admiration. So uh, before, uh, so now let us now uh, travel through her uh, explorations and I'll uh, request her to go ahead with the presentation. Okay, thank you. First of all, uh, thank you Kritika for the introduction. And uh, I want to express my sincere thanks and gratitude to the team at Offnex for reaching out to me and uh, allowing me to be part of your live session. I think uh, the platform that you've created for young people to come and talk and to interact with one another is really exciting. And I really look forward to an interesting session. Um, I do um, think that with the current state that we are in with the pandemic, it's really important to keep optimistic and to keep connecting on a platform like this. So yeah, so thank you so much, team of next. So, so yeah, uh, yeah. So I think um, I will start by sharing with you a brief presentation since you asked me to prepare a brief presentation on um, on on my uh, work at MAD, uh, not necessarily the projects that I worked on because I'm not allowed to share that, but uh, just displaying some of their uh, works, their, their projects that they've already um, you know, they're already built and that are ongoing. And they're very interesting when it comes to, you know, different aspects like sustainability, material usage, their concept, their design exploration. And I think me being inside the office, I, I have seen already so much and uh, it, it will be very nice to share with all of you. And apart from that, I've also added a little bit of my personal design explorations along the way uh, and uh, project from my master's, which I had done at the AA. So I think it'd be very interesting to start a dialogue. So let me start by sharing my screen. Okay, is it visible now as I change my slides? Yeah? Yeah, it's visible, yeah. Okay, perfect. So yeah, let's begin. So I would like to talk about a uh, little bit about my introduction. Um, you know, Kritika has already given a brilliant introduction. So I'd just like to say that uh, I have a master's degree from the Architectural Association Design Research Lab in London. And my Bachelor of Architecture was from BMS College of Engineering in Bangalore. I am from uh, the lovely hill station Shillong Meghalaya, which is a small state in uh, Northeast India. So prior to working at MAD, my architectural practice experience included uh, that at uh, my local practice, you know, in um, in Long. So I, I did learn a lot about the traditional architecture and the traditional concepts and how we were using local materials and, um, you know, local ideas to, to bring these concepts to life. But then I think I, I had so much more curiosity in me. So I moved on to uh, this firm in Bangalore called SDEC. So I worked with Sujit Nair in SDEC briefly for a short before I continued to do my master's. And it was here that I, um, I, I, I understood this experimental approach. You know, it was here that I understood this experimental approach to designing and problem solving. And then finally, um, yeah, now I am here at Mad Architects and it's really interesting to see the kind of design evolution that has uh, happened for me, you know, from where I started to where I am now. So um, a little bit about the works of MAD. So I think MAD, as you know, MAD Arch is an architectural design firm based in Beijing, and it is founded by Ma Yansong. So it's interesting because the architecture of Ma Yansong and the architectural style of MAD, you know, they are these organic forms that um, uh, that are reminiscent of nature, you know, they, they remind you of the nature and the landscape uh, that is surrounding you. Uh, their work is a dialogue between the people and uh, the environment. And 
uh, I think their work really attempts to integrate the two, you know, to integrate people and the environment and to, to start up a dialogue between the two. So their work seeks wisdom within natural phenomena, you know, of, of waves and mountains and formless winds. So I think it's super interesting to see the kind of projects that they have developed over the years uh, from all scales, uh, from low rise to high rise to, to installations to, um, I think, uh, housing. And, and it's like the context is so, so different every time. And that's what I like about Matt Architects is it's so unique. You know, every project of theirs is so unique. So since you would like me to talk a little bit on the projects, I selected five projects, which I really, uh, I think, have a lot of importance, uh, considering uh, the different aspects of conversation that we are igniting in this, in this talk. So this, this project is the Chaoyang Park Plaza in Beijing. So when we speak about the word building, you know, buildings in layman terms, I think we imagine uh, you know, a, a rectilinear box-like volume, you know, when we speak of buildings, we think about the first image that will come to your mind is, okay, it's uh, is this box-like volume which is standing there amidst this dense urban city, you know. But then this Chaoyang Park Plaza, these black towers that you see here, they completely transform the, mo the model of this building. They completely transform the idea of this building that is found in our urban cities. You know, these two towers stand boldly um, as two black mountains here in the heart of Beijing CBD. And I think that uh, the idea that Maya and Song had was from these traditional Chinese paintings. So if you've seen a traditional Chinese painting, it's called a Shansu uh, painting. It has a lot of natural forms, your mountains and your hills your sense of fluidity in architecture, you know, we start to see how um, how these forms, which are basically high rise or low rise, uh, they start to adapt a different sort of uh, curvature to their to their um, the, their typology, you know, it's, it starts to curve in. So it goes from a rigid uh, rectilinear grid, it goes from the road, which is also rectilinear, it goes from your pathways, which are also rectilinear your cars and then it moves and it it, it flows you know so uh, here this image here which shows the plan the top view is very interesting because you can see how it goes from uh, these you know lanes these your roads to this sort of flowing um, topology these lines and then they translate themselves to these low rise plazas which are created to form this public space which are created to form this community this idea of bringing in uh, people together, having nature um, surrounding you, you know? So this is very interesting. And I think um, when it comes to sustainability, I think uh, it's very important for us as architects to, to also, uh, you know, design buildings that are, are sustainable. So I think uh, the designers, uh, when they were designing this building, did think about that. So what, here in this uh, core tubing framing system, which you see as these vertical fins, these vertical fin fins that run along the exterior facade. So what these fins are is, um, you know, they have this energy efficient fresh air indoors, making it optimal for sunlight. You know, they're drawing fresh air. And then I think this building was also awarded the lead um, gold certification by the U.S. Green Building Council. So I think uh, I really like this building. Also, the play of materials here is really nice. It has steel reinforced concrete, but then it has this tinted black glass to you know replicate that ink-based painting idea that that Ma had. So yeah, this is one project, and the second one, which is my personal favorite, I think it's everybody's favorite. I think I don't know, but um, uh, is the Harbin Opera House. So now this Harbin Opera House was designed, as you can see, uh, to, to emerge out of the landscape, you know. It was designed in response to the wilderness of this frozen climate that belongs to the city of Harbin. Uh, so I have personally been here. I have visited um, the Harbin Opera House and I must say that it is so beautiful because it feels like, you know, you are a part of of the nature which is surrounding you, it draws you in. 
So you never feel a disconnect between what is around you and when you are in it. It sort of is emerging from the landscape and it's coming out as this gigantic, humongous form which is standing right there in front of you. I think this is really, really, it, it evokes an emotional response. It's so beautiful. So I think this architecture, it choreographs this narrative, you know, which highlights this sinuous landscape surrounding us. And then the facade is composed of, um, uh, I think, uh, smooth, smooth white aluminum panels. And what's also interesting about the Harbin Opera House is not just the exterior, but in fact, more so the interior. Because I think the grand lobby in itself is to be looked up in awe. It's uh, so gigantic. It's uh, made up of a contrast of materials. It is a perfect blend between concrete and wood, you know. Um, I think they have really been, it's a very successful project when it comes to harmonizing the two materials, wood and concrete. It's a perfect balance between the two. And then you also have your glass facade, which is enveloping you in some way. So you always feel like there's no end. It, the, there are no boundaries. You know, your, your marble is just ex exceeding into the um, it's just extending into the landscape because of these humongous glass panels that are surrounding you. So I think this uh, Harbin Opera House is uh, really, it's, uh, it's a balance between the smooth and the sharp, you know, if, if, uh, when it comes to architectural form. And um, the third project, which is actually, um, it's already broken ground in, uh, in a city called Kuzo in China. It is this uh, sports complex, sports stadium. But I think when you look at this, I think I, I, you would see, yes, you would see a stadium, you would see a gymnasium, you would see a field. But then the, the beauty of this is, um, you know, they are all enclosed within this mountain. They're all enclosed within this mountainous landscape, this, this natural form, creating this earth art, you know, mix. And I think uh, the idea behind this project is that all the activities uh, are to be hidden, are to be concealed. Uh, the idea was it to, uh, the idea for it was for it to appear as, um, you know, um, a, a Martian, Martian landscape, like, you know, in, in the words of Mayan, so a Martian landscape mysterious. And then as you, as one enters, the view suddenly opens up towards these broad horizons and the bright sky. So this is really interesting when it comes to, again, a dialogue between how the nature flows and turns into, uh, into a building form. Um, the other project, which I would like to highlight, uh, which is also, um, I think, uh, uh, in the process of, of development is um, the, the Phoenix Rotterdam uh, uh, viewpoint. So this is this is very interesting because you know it um, it is a, panoram a panoramic viewpoint. It is this uh, grand staircase, this ramp like um, a ramp staircase combination, uh, which is actually present in this historic Phoenix warehouse. You know, it is uh, more like a renovation project. There is already an existing historical warehouse. And the idea uh, of the office was that uh, the, the idea of the designers was that we wanted to create, uh, you know, this dynamic transformation of this warehouse that will encourage people to move through the space, you know, and enjoy uh, the community. Uh, and uh, it's just traversing from ground to first floor to, to the roof. And then it also stands there as this um, embodiment of, you know, this, um, this curvy linear, this fluidity that uh, we we are that is really trending. I think it's really interesting how there's again a striking balance between the sharp, the rigid, and the curve, the curvy linear form, right? So this is one project, uh, and this. Recently, they have this small scale project. Um, it is uh, the wormhole library, multifunctional building that is conceived as an oasis. So it has these openings uh, allowing these visitors 
to temporarily be part of the form, but then remove themselves and come out to the open, come out into um, the, the the nice thing about this is that it has the material the material usage and this is really interesting because quite concrete. They've, so your floors, your walls, and your ceiling appear as one unified whole. So you don't really have the distinction between um, between a floor and a and a and a wall. So it has like a, you know it stands as one surface. And uh, also, this is uh, I have chosen to, to to showcase this project because I think that the seamlessness that you see it has been cast by using a CNC and 3D printed um, technique. You know, um, I think they they have released some photos showing how the mold is is being cast, and I think um, all the materials and uh, sorry, all the mechanical, electrical, plumbing elements have been hidden within this concrete. Uh, within this concrete cavity, so you don't really see the the inner dynamics of the space. So yeah, that's about it. This uh, this building is also actually is also actually uh, addressing um, a sustainable approach because I think um, you know these approaches are allowing the architecture to breathe. So you are allowing a lot of natural light. You are allowing a lot of um, a lot of clean air and ventilation to flood your interior. So in a way, an approach uh, has been taken. Um, and, and also the roof uh, on the sunny side has been cantilevered much to achieve, I think, a, a comfortable temperature as you're, you know, uh, staying inside and making, uh, making it a very sustainable, energy efficient uh, building. So I think uh, a couple of these uh, images of um, of the works done by MAD really highlight how unique a project can be, really highlight how, um, how you're being critical of your context, how you are really understanding your context, how you are really bringing in, um, you know, inspiration from, from, your, from your natural surrounding, or, or if not from your natural surrounding, but just understanding the context. So I think, uh, yeah, I think these, these, these projects that I, I chose to put in today are actually some of my all-time favorites, uh, ranging from high-rise, your, your towers, and, and then uh, something as small as a library. So uh, there, are, there are still a lot more projects which we are developing, and uh, it's really exciting. This entire journey with Matt, it's, it's coming up, it's exciting, and I'm still scratching the surface, but, you know, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to delve in deep and to really, really understand the mechanics of the office.